Hey guys, it's Matt from GI Energy. Today we're doing the MySigin phone app tutorial. So I've got one of my colleagues' systems installed here and we'll just do a run through of obviously how to use the app, what you can see, anything that you need to change on there. So it'll show you your system details just at the top with the name of the site and the grid connection date. And then below that, it will tell you if it's in normal operation or off-grid operation if it's offline maybe because of Wi-Fi or something else that'll just be shown in that small top section there you've got the three dots to the right which show you the system settings I'll come back to that but just to say where they were because just below that you've got the home or business picture which is then going to show you solar home SIGIN store and then the grid so right now looking at this system 9.8 kilowatts of solar is being generated. You can see the movement of that power coming down from the panels at the top towards the SIG energy system. 4.18 kilowatts are being consumed in the home. So you can see that that power comes from the panels, goes via the SIG and store to the gateway and meter, and then into the house. And then you can also see that right now, 5.62 kilowatts of solar energy is being exported to the grid. So that final flow of power coming from there, going out to the grid icon there. So depending on the time of day that you're looking at the app, it'll show you obviously different readings there. If you're looking at this in, in the evening or a time where maybe there's really low solar generation, you'll see that the SIG and store likely would be discharging energy. So that may show you that there's one kilowatt of power from the battery being discharged towards the home. If your battery was empty or you're on a VPP or a time-based tariff, you may see some power either exporting from the battery or importing from the grid to the battery in the home if it's been set up that way, so that obviously you need to use some power from, from the grid at that time. Um, depending on if the panels are installed directly to the SIG Energy system, or maybe there's a third-party inverter on site and we've AC coupled the system, you may see two different readings in the solar section. So you'd see the panels that are installed with the SIG showing the solar, and then third party inverter would be, let's say there's a five kilowatt inverter with 6.6 .6 of panels. So another five kilowatts of solar being generated from that system. If there's a AC or DC EV charger installed as well, that will appear to the left of the SIG and store battery. And that will obviously show you if you've got the car plugged in or not if it's charging, and obviously how much power is going to the charger at that time. Below that, we've got real-time info. So that's just showing you the active power and the reactive power of the system. Below that, we've got the usable capacity of the battery. So this system here has a full stack, 48 kilowatt hours, and then it's got the lights for how much um, the state of charge is right now. So this battery at the time is fully charged. This next section, a lot of people obviously look at quite um, intently, which is called energy st statistics. You can then cycle through day, week, month, year, and lifetime. I'll just come back to the day here. So this is being recorded at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So, so far today, this system's generated just over 81 kilowatt hours of solar and you can then see the flow of that power to so where it's gone. So at the top, we can see that that's gone into the battery, 29.87 kilowatt hours, just over 32% of that power that's been generated from solar. The load in the home, just over 45 kilowatt hours, and just shy of 50% of that overall power again that's been consumed directly. And then finally, 16 and a half kilowatt hours that has gone to the grid. So that's power that's been sent to the grid over and above what the home and the battery requires. On the left, going down, the next section here is the battery. So just shy of 11 kilowatt hours has been discharged from the battery, most likely from midnight until solar began generating again. And you can see that that flow of power went directly to the load. Very partial amount of power, 70 watt hours that has come from the grid. Maybe just a time where there was a real real quick burst of power that was needed in the home. Um, so you can see that flow, and obviously that will change day and night, and you can adjust it based on the timeline. So if we go to the lifetime of this system, 
which has been installed for about six weeks, seven weeks. Over 3.3 megawatt hours of solar have been generated. And in that time, only 63.92 kilowatt hours have been taken from the grid. So this site is almost completely self-sufficient and you can see the flow of power between the battery, the load and what's been exported to the grid. And then just below there, it gives you those figures again. Also gives you a metrics chart. So once there's more information in there, that will obviously bulk out a little bit more. I'll just shift it back to today. So that way you can see the graph that's on the screen now. So you can see the yellow, which is the solar generation above the line. You can see the load consumed, which is purple below the line. And then the battery where it's been charged below and discharged above the line again. Also gives you the sunrise and sunset hours if that's something you want to look at. And then again, just gives you those figures. Next section is the battery SOC percentage, so the state of charge of the battery. So this battery dropped down to about, whoa, let's say just under 50%, just before 6 a.m. Took me a while to get that on there. And then the battery was full before midday. On this site here, the smart home device that's connected to the smart port is a third party charger. That's something that came um, obviously with the vehicle at the time before the solar installation. You can set the rate plan. So this is where you can import the tariff. So depending on who your retailer is, if it's a time of use based tariff, if you're on a flat rate and what your feed-in rate is, you can put that in there and then that will generate the savings that have been achieved. Energy produced in AI mode there as well. And then the environmental benefits from the system. So how many emissions, trees planted, stuff like that. I'm just gonna scroll back up to the top of the app now. So where we had the system details right at the top with the three dots, if we click on there, this is then the settings for the system. So you can change the operational mode So just looking through here. So right now this is in self-consumption mode. You can flick that into AI mode so that the SIG and AI will make the best use of the power for your home. You can do a time-based control. So the time-based control then gives you a schedule. So with my system at home, I use a time-based control between 11 and two, any power that I take from the grid is completely free. So I'd then, check, uh, I'd then click Schedule, go Setup, and I can then tell it to charge from the grid between 11 and two o'clock. And then I go Self-Consumption, which then preloads for the period before the charging window that I've set, so from midnight to 11 a.m repeat and every day of the week I hit self-consumption again and then I get the period that's after that window that I want to charge from the grid between 2 p.m. and midnight and again every day of the week and repeat it. If for some reason I wanted to set a timer to discharge to the grid so I believe there's one or two retailers now that will have a um, like a daily uh, rate that they pay you between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. for any power that's exported to the grid. That's what the discharging function would be used for on here. I'll just cancel this out so Ivan doesn't get upset. And I'll come out of there. So self-consumption mode is what he had it in, so I'll just go back to that. Fully feed into the grid. That would only be if you were trying to sell all the power to the grid at any time. And um, the remote EMS again, if there's just a third party system in place. So I'll come out of that. The one that you've probably not seen on there that other people may have looked at is a VPP mode. So that would be something that would be integrated remotely by a VPP retailer. So once that system's integrated and enrolled into their network, they'll remotely update that for you. So you may then come back into this and see that it's in VPP mode and that's because that's been done on your behalf. You can set the priorities <clears throat> in terms of the system. 
So you can set the battery level. So you can say, I want to have a cut off uh, 10% so that 10% of my battery is always preserved. That's obviously it never drops below that rate. Maybe if there's a potential storm or something coming, you could raise that as well. And you can change that on there. So you tap the percentage, backup state of charge, 27%, discharge cutoff, 9%. If for any reason you didn't want the battery at full charge, you could bring that down as well. So that just all is amended on that left-hand side there. Again, I won't just save, I won't save that for right now. Grid export power limit. This would be something that your installer may have put in place if there's an export limit from your DNSP, so from the local power distributor. Grid import limit. That may be where, going back to that scheduling, if between 11 and two, you're importing a lot of power on a single phase supply, that you may want to put an import limit. So obviously it doesn't go above the mains, the incoming mains that's rated there. tariff rate plan that's the same thing where we were looking on the previous uh, previous page where you can put in the costs so what you pay for power and what your export rate is smart home device settings now you can see on here this is where the third party charger is included and it will show you how much power has gone through that smart home device so only 50 watt hours here so very very little if you find a day where there's been a lot more power use, that would show there. If you have the um, your hot water wired into the smart port, or there's a Shelly relay or a similar device that's logging your air conditioning consumption or something else in the home that you've obviously set up in that way, this is where it will show in here. And on garage, it's just got the same thing. Stormwatch. This is a newer setting from one of the recent firmware updates. So by activating Stormwatch, the SIGIN system then receives updates from the bomb. So if there's a storm warning, that will then obviously kick in there. So if we go to backup settings, enable backup before the storm. This one's set at three hours. So if they're predicting that a storm would be at 6 p.m., it may force charge the battery if it's not sufficiently charged just to ensure that it's obviously then 100% state of charge ready. Weather warnings, that's just where you can toggle on or off any of the any of the things on there. So if cyclone, tornado, hail, stuff like that, so that's where the warning would arrive. Energy saving mode. When facing potential off-grid operation, would you like the battery to enter dormancy mode? So that's obviously if you have quite a stable network, just so there's not excess power being used. This one's set in performance mode rather than any enhanced saving. So I guess similar to like a smartphone, you have that uh, like battery saver that comes on the low power mode. We'd always really want this in the performance mode here. I'll come back out. So that was in that energy management settings. General. It's just got the system ID, location, panel capacity, battery capacity. Software update. Right now this is all up to date, so nothing needs to be changed. Warranty. So the warranty on the inverter and the batteries is all in here. Indicator settings. This one a lot of people ask about actually. So on the SIGIN store controller, there's the little wheel on there, which has the LED lights, so you can flick them on and off. And you can also change things on there. So this one's set to breathing right now, but what I might do is I'll flick it to the Christmas tree and see if he notices when he gets home. That's been saved. The LED strips on the left-hand side of the battery as you're looking at it. You can have that as the Christmas tree. You can have it as the state of charge. So to show how full the battery is, power flow in and out, and you can adjust the colors as well. So that's pretty cool. Connectivity, 
that's just showing you that your system is connected to the network. So whether it's um, over Ethernet with a plugged in cable or over Wi-Fi. And then device shows you that as well. Troubleshooting. This will just run a system diagnostics check just to make sure everything's working fine with the system. It's been completed. Power sensor in the gateway is connected. Internet's connected. All the connections are normal, which is great. Alarm. That will just show you if there's any alerts from the system. Feedback history. That will just be any tickets that are processed on the system. Installer tools. So under installer tools, this would be more specific to your installer that's shown in our sort of management app here. So I think that's pretty much everything that we've got here. So I guess the main parts you'd be looking at would be the flow of power section. So how much solar you're generating, how much your home's using, state of charge of the battery, and then just your graph for the day. If there's any other information that we've missed on there that you'd like us to go over, please leave us a comment in there. Thank you.